So yesterday I caught two cases in the middle of the night. I was at the mall um, with a student and his mother showing him how to fit himself for a suit, how it should look and whatnot. Um, and I got two calls for two different cases and I had to like sit in the middle of the mall taking down the information, taking the phone calls. And then I sat for another hour in the parking lot trying to organize and get people um, and schedule people for what I needed them to schedule for. One is like a mediation and a bodyguard case because it's a domestic violence case. And the other one is surveillance case. Um, a husband thinks a wife is cheating. And so um, that's what we're going to be doing today. So right now I'm on the way to the wife's house um, where we're going to see how, you know, volatile the situation is. Um, it's going to be two of us. Apparently the husband is not leaving not going along with separation and divorce and all that and making it difficult they got two kids and so the father of the wife wants to hire a full-time bodyguard until it's solved until it's resolved which is a little weird for me because a bodyguarding a woman while she still lives in the house with the man is weird um not only it's weird it's a little more dangerous than just keeping somebody out you're technically keeping them in and like babysitting them and it's just it seems like a lot of liability so this this morning's meeting is to just assess the property assess the two individuals because every time a client reaches out to you doesn't mean that they're the good guy or that they're the victim or that they're the one not causing the issue so you definitely have to do your due diligence and figure out you know if this is worth it for you because not all money is good money second case while I'm at this first uh, location I have another investigator who's going to start the tailing and the surveillance on the wife and then once I'm done where I'm at my supervisor is off and then I am going to go meet the other investigator and either trade off or um, she's new so I'm either going to trade off with her let her go home or she's going to hop in the car with me and kind of learn some of the stuff that I do when I'm tailing and some of the tools I use while I'm tailing. So today should be very interesting. Uh, I have my coffee. I did not play with that. Starbucks to the rescue. Um, I have my stogies in the bag um, and I have my newspaper. It's Saturday, so I get the I get the delivery every Saturday. So I am ready for a stakeout, you know. I'm ready. I got the coffee, got the newspaper and cigars. Pretty much that's all I need. Hopefully she does something that I can take pictures and videos of and I can be off by 12 that's the hope right um so and plus the individual didn't pay for a lot of time they only paid for a little bit of time i gave them like a, a, a discount but they think it's a discount but it was really a rush fee um so we'll see how it goes you know uh, the life of a private investigator So we're at the location. I'm about to debrief with my guy. Um, so we did the meeting with the wife. We thought the husband was gonna be there. He wasn't there. Um, so now I'm like, eh, I need to meet with him to let him know what's going on because it's also his house. And you know, you know, so I mean, you know, I need to meet with him to make sure that my officers are safe. I mean, I know we're there for if something is to happen, but I don't want to be putting them in a overly volatile. It might be volatile for her, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be the same type of volatility for us. Um, so it, we need to know the level of ignorance and attitude that we're going to be dealing with. You know, um, my company is predominantly African-American. Are we going to be dealing with somebody who's going to be calling the N-word all day? Is that, can I put somebody there who might be easily triggered by that and punch them in the face? All those things matter <laughs> when I'm scheduling people, putting people on details and things like that. Who can handle what, whose skill set is for what, etc. So then also, 
I had another investigator out doing a case while I was doing that case management and they lost the girl that they were following but then end up finding the girl and then um, it's a new investigator so there's 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 a lot of training that needs to be done and I was supposed to be there sooner um, so they're out following the girl they found her um, they thought they got noticed but then they realized that they didn't so it was just like first time jitters and I'm just like yo calm down and do the job then I found out that they wrote notes instead of taking pictures of what they saw they wrote notes about what they saw which note taking is very important but the clients in 2024 they want video and picture to prove that you are doing that job and you're doing so I don't I never told her to take notes I told her to take video and picture so I'm not sure why she did that then they're at some sort of destination she texts me and tells me that she followed her to a house the person parked got out but she has the address of the house but forgot to look at the street name then you don't have an address if you have a number but you don't have a, a, a street name then you don't actually have an address because that number could be the same on 20 other different streets so I tell her that she has to swing back around and get the daggone street name and still follow the lady like so you know it's difficult trying to teach from the phone from the car but I can't do every single case on my own so you know I'm on my way to the subject's house in case she loses her and she ends up going back home so I'm gonna go sit at the subject's house to watch any movement if she gets lost and that way I'm in the vicinity I'm in the area if we have to switch vehicles I can do so so I'm gonna be on standby mode it's time for me to read a newspaper kind of thing so right now the client actually told me to go home and that they didn't want to waste any more money and I happened to be pulled over to the side out of the way and I was about like debriefing with my other investigator about what happened earlier um, and the person we were watching actually left the house and drove past us so I got right on it and I called the client like hey I know you told us to end surveillance because they were in the house but they're no longer in the house do you want me to get on it and they're like oh my god catch up and I'm like I don't have to catch up like I'm with her I'm actually with her so what's up and so boom you know so end result of today is we followed the subject into a military base I am armed I'm an armed investigator and we can't do civilian investigations on a military base you can get in trouble for that um, you can also get in trouble for having a firearm on a military base I could get in they didn't actually check um, but I don't like to take thing I don't like to do chances I don't, I'm too small to go to jail so I don't like to do chances so we're actually gonna leave it here we have an address of where she is um, and you know you know so that I'm gonna write up a report write up an invoice and send it to the client and um, if they decide to do another day to get more concrete uh, evidence. The, their, their goal was to get some PDA, um, but what I put in my contracts is that results are not guaranteed because people want one thing and you can only get another thing and everything is dependent on the actual subject's activities and their behavior. So she went somewhere where we can't follow her on to and you know, she probably knew that too. And if she if she saw us, she knew that if she went to the military base, you know, because we can't hear her phone calls. We don't know if she changed locations. But she did tell him that he, she was going to a wine festival in D.C. And she's not in D.C. She is still in Maryland. She's on a military base on a Saturday, which is usually visiting hours. So, yeah, case is a, is a wrap until and I go uh, I go according to what people pay. If you pay for a certain amount of time, you only get a certain amount of time. If you say, hey, work the case fully, there's a price. I charge like 1500 and above, and that way I could do whatever. I could do multiple days. I could do this. But when people put me on a restriction on a budget, I go, hey, I keep them updated with every little detail, see if they want to keep going. But So this was a good day. This was a good day.